um, lots of people, but maybe people will join on the replay and they'll um, just leave their comments. I went live on my Facebook page, Marianne Hansen Counselling Service. No, sorry, I went live on my personal page, Marianne Hansen, this morning to talk about this thing. And the only reason I'm doing this as a live stream is because obviously as a counsellor, most of my videos are counselling topics. Occasionally I do the art book review and also TV review. And especially if it's a program that involves couples or relationships, I've made reviews of um, different reality TV shows. And I thought, you know what, just sometimes it's nice to just do something a bit different. There is obviously um, a show called Married at First Sight, which is going on in Australia. They've done the um, American versions and there's the UK versions. And what I'm just gonna talk about really is just the challenges of um, being on that type of show and just the whole idea and concept of the show, which I think is really interesting. And then I'm going to talk about a few couples, but they are going to be UK couples. So if anyone's watching and they don't know who I'm talking about, <laughs> you'd have to tune into the UK show or go on YouTube and just put Married in First Sight UK because that will bring up the UK um, ones. So the whole concept to me is really interesting. And I think any type of reality TV show, I don't really watch many reality TV shows. I watch Below Deck, um, Judge Judy, I watch that. Uh, what else? Um, there's not Big Brother. I used to watch Big Brother. I was even going to go on to there as a contestant. Um, this, When this first came along, um, the idea of like marrying a complete stranger, it was just fascinating and I think it caught a lot of people's attention because it was, people were probably, the first thing they were thinking is why would anyone do that? I personally couldn't do it because I just feel that leaving experts you know, up to making that type of decision when they don't really know you, they have a bit of a chat with you first, the matchmakers do, but there's no way they're going to um, be able to get it right. But saying that, a lot of couples that have been on the show have gone on to have children, to stay married, um, and they're still together. So there is like something in this, it is possible. But the whole idea of, I think one of the key things that the couples, I'm um, sorry, the matchmakers don't think about is the physical attraction side of things and I suppose that's what they're trying to experiment with. They're trying to say if they put together two strangers based on um, compatible visions of what that person wants, values, personality and that sort of thing, then it doesn't matter what that person looks like when they see them at the altar, they will still like be able to get along with each other and I suppose the whole concept of the show is to see the struggles that the couples go through. Now, I initially, I preferred the fir very first, anything like, oh yeah, another um, reality TV show I did, are you, um, is Are You The One For Me? So that's on, it's called Are You The One, which was on MTV. Now, the thing with some of these shows is the very first episodes you watch, so the first series is usually the best. So also, what's another one? Not Survivor, but... Um, there's another American show as well, where, oh, the Bachelor, the Bachelor, I watched that, the first one as well. Because the concept starts off new, it's fine, because you have this new idea and it's interesting. The problem with the producers then is they think that people want to see arguments, um, dramatics, people crying for no reason, people throwing drinks over each other, and that's when it just becomes pathetic TV, really, because it's not real. And what happens is you take a normal situation, which could become really interesting to watch, where people can say, wow, what's going to go on between these couples or what's going to happen? And then they throw, the producers put scripts in there where you can see people are acting. They put in fake tears, like when, where you can clearly see why is someone being so dramatic about this situation in real life, you wouldn't overreact like that. Or why someone just walked over and threw a cup of um, beer over someone when, they, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I struggled to watch some of these things. And the first episode of Married at First Sight this, this year round, I watched 15 minutes of it, I tried and I couldn't. Then the second time round, I recorded it and I fast forwarded at least half. And then I thought, oh, okay, there's a few good interesting bits. Yesterday was the first time I've watched the whole episode, the commitment ceremony. And I found it really interesting, to be honest, only because the experts were involved. So the exit, you know, and obviously I'm a counsellor, so seeing how the experts 
viewed the situations, how they fed back to the couples, whether the couples decided to stay or go. I think the commitment ceremony side of the experiment is the most interesting thing. And I also think that if people didn't, people sometimes go on shows because they've seen what's happened before, they've seen who's won. So I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. They've seen what the winners have done to win Love Island. They've seen what those winners have done. They also are thinking about contracts. They're thinking about how can I be the most um, controversial? How can I be the most entertaining? But I know that that works. That formula must work because lots of people tune in. For me, that formula never works because I want to see two real people go on a show. They don't have a clue, clue who they're going to get married to and just act like normally, like how you would react. So it's also weird sometimes when you see, um, which I'm going to talk about now, people who are so... Um, like they've got no boundaries at all or they're not wary. So Shanita and, so we've got eight couples. We've got Shanita and Jordan, Whitney and Duca, Kwame and Cassia, April and George, Zoe and Jenna, um, who are a lesbian couple, um, Adrian and Thomas, a gay couple, and Lara and Richie. So I'll just describe bits of the, as I go through the couples, I'll talk to you a little bit about what's going on with them. But, you know, I'll also be talking about whether I feel is that it can it ever work like these sorts of experiments i think the difficulty and the challenges people are going to face are that first of all you're on camera you're being filmed there um it is to be fair it's a show so they're only going to show edited versions of what you do and you have to be mindful of that also you have to be the type of person who has a strong enough personality to know that maybe the person you wanted at the altar is not going to appear and then what you're going to do then so if you're very adaptable and you know how to compromise and you feel this is really what I want so I'm going to make an effort, then there, yeah, that's fine. But then in other situations, people can't do that and we've noticed that with a few of these couples. So the first couple, PJ and Jess, PJ is a stripper. Um, now, the other thing is, I think when you go on these shows as well, they ask you, are you open to people from different religions and are you open to people from different um, ethnic backgrounds? Because you're not going to match someone in an interact, put them in an interracial couple unless they're open to that. I'm not saying that when they turn up, that's what they're expecting. But if you notice, Kwame and Kazia, they both clearly said they wanted someone of the same ethnic group, and that's who they were matched with. PJ is um, a black male, and he's matched with a white female, Jess. Now, that doesn't really, I don't think that has been one of the things that's come up as an issue for them, obviously. The issue that has come up is that. Um, when she found out he was a stripper and he was living at home, then that was it. It was already game over from that point. But then she just wasn't attracted to him. And I think the producers, as I've said, they don't take into account the power of chemistry and physical attraction. If someone isn't physically attracted to someone, I personally think you can still get to know that person. You can grow to love them. You can maybe become attracted because I don't um, view attractiveness just on looks. I can, there can be a good, I've dated and I've seen or had the opportunity to date guys that have got the muscles, they've got the height, they've got the looks, they like models, but they have like bad attitudes, treat women badly, or they've just not got the personality. And for me, like if you've got no like intelligence level where you can have a normal conversation about different things, then it doesn't matter how good looking you are. So for me, I'm not going to sort of just rule someone out because I'm not attracted to them physically, but lots of people would. Jess definitely has. The difficult thing with that is that PJ is just, he's like a puppy. He's like, oh, I'll do anything you want and I want to make it work. He is almost blinded to the fact that she's friend zoned him from the beginning. The um, experts took um, said yesterday on the commitment ceremony that she's not showing any affection towards him. They said that she's not being fair towards him. And I think it's a two-way street. He he knows deep down that there's not much you can do to convince someone to want to stay married to you. She, but the thing she did yesterday was she wrote stay. I don't know what she's staying for. She's made it clear that there's nothing going on. They're just friends. She keeps using the terms friends. There's no absolutely no physical affection. If you see when she's sat next to him... She's so closed off with her body language. And then she's trying to say that because she's been hurt before and she did like break down and say what happened, that she's been cheated on. But she knows deep down that this is not a marriage, it's just fake. So the point is that you might as well just say that they're not going to continue. They're going to continue in the experiment, but it's not going anywhere. That's my opinion on them. 
Shanita and Jordan, and everything's going well, so there's not much to explore except that what I said earlier about I felt it was almost weird that she was so um she was so excited <laughs> she was so excited that she was like there was no filter no barrier and I don't know I think if I just if I'm getting married I'd be happy like because I've gone on the experiment and I'm happy with the person but I don't know if I'd be that familiar like over familiar with someone she was like hugging him and she was like yeah we've known each other all that and I I know that is like something that happens. People talk about this love at first sight. They talk about everything being perfect. I, I can't relate to that. So I, the same way that someone is really standoffish, that's one extreme. And the same way if someone is too eager, it's like children. I've worked with children in foster care when they've kind of just gone straight up to a foster parent and they're like, mummy, and they're really saying, I love you. And it's kind of like, oh, on their first day, that is like an attachment thing. No, I'm not saying there's any problems with Shanita and Jordan. I think they're a good couple and they work well. Let's see how it progresses. They're doing well so far. They get on well. So, yeah, you know, obviously she thinks he's perfect. He thinks she's perfect. That's probably what it's like. Um, Kwame and Ka Kazia, I think. So Kwame is um, from Ghana originally. Well, born in Ghana, but I think he was, um, I don't know if he was even born in Ghana. He's got Ghana Ghanaian heritage and he lives in the UK. I think he's good looking. I know some people haven't. Now, there was a channel on here, um, Nadia, Nadia and family. Nadia Sawala is a famous presenter and she does a sh um, show on the, in the UK. I did go on her channel and I did put some comments because she was being really, really harsh about him. She was saying he was arrogant. She was saying, who does he think he is? Um, why does he spend so much time in the mirror? He loves himself. Now, the issue I've got with that is he's a proud African man. He, it's, it's his wedding day. So what's the problem with him getting dressed up and looking at himself in the mirror? No one says that about people on Love Island when they're walking around with their tops off, you know, post posing, um, you know, putting in, putting on makeup, even the boys putting on makeup sometimes. No one says a word, that's fine because that is classed as okay. When he does it, you know, it's a big deal. So all I said to him is that it's a cultural thing He's an African man, he's a proud man, it's his wedding day, leave him alone, do you know what I mean? He's allowed to look in the mirror, any man is, or woman, and love themselves, you know, it's not arrogance to love yourself. He, I think, is, the only thing I'm unsure about with Kwame is whether he has admitted that the woman that he married is not physically what he would go for, so he would go for a slimmer, he said he wants like Instagram type model looking, um, and body as well. She's a fuller figured woman. She's to me got a great figure, you know, she's a, she's a full figured woman, but she's, I think she looks good. And also she dresses well, she's got great um, makeup, she does well, her hair's nice. I think she's a ni nice, but he, that's not who, and I think there's nothing wrong with people saying, this is what my preference is. But if you go on a show like that where you don't know who's going to turn up, then you have to adapt and be co compromised. But you don't have to. I think people are always forcing people into what they should like. And it's society does it. And so does TV. Because TV only presents to us the types of people that they think we want to see. And then you get to this point where everyone on Instagram is all looking the same with lip fillers. They're all looking the same with overdone makeup. And then it's kind of like when people don't present in that way, then it's, oh, this person's plain or someone says I want an Instagram type person but we're all different we're all unique in how we look so I think he has a preference that he doesn't want that sort of shape but I think he's attracted to her personality so what we have to look at is you've got two people and there is potential but she's very much wanting it to go further now with the intimacy levels she's not getting any intimacy from Kwame He's put making excuses and saying, you know, we can't. But I don't know. The thing is with him, I've got a question mark on the couple, Kwame and Kazia, because I don't know if he's being truthful by saying he wants to take it slow and he's being respectful and a gentleman, or whether he just doesn't like her, he doesn't find her physically attractive, and he's trying to buy some time. I don't know. It's the one couple where I can't figure it out. So I think if other people have their, like... Um, thoughts on it then let me know but I don't know so I'm, I'm I'm holding what's the word called I'm holding back on the judgment with that because he seems like he's being genuine but then again he might be just not interested I would date him um I think he's got a nice way of talking he's quite laid back he's a bit gentle but he might be a, I don't know but I find him I think he's a nice person but anyway let's see 
Then you've got Zoe and Jenna. <laughs> um, they are, Jenna's vegan and um, Zoe's from Birmingham. I think because she's got my accent or she's round about the Midlands, I, I just find her funny. I can relate to her. I just think she's, when she found out Jenna was vegan and she went, she can't eat eggs. She was like, she can't eat eggs. And she just, she can't believe that like her partner's like, she doesn't know much about veganism, obviously, but the thing that with them two, I suppose is the key thing is going to be is the their lifestyle that's different. I personally don't think because Jenna wasn't um, hasn't always been a vegan, so she turned into a vegan. It means she's experienced eating meat and having meat around her. It would be more difficult, I think, if someone um, that is who they are. That's a part of who they are. They've always been like that. It's still going to cause an issue, but I don't know if it would be enough of an issue for them to like, you know, divide because they've got a lot of things in common and they get along with each other. But it could come up because I suppose the way to look at it is it's like if you were dating someone who goes to church and is very religious and they have Bibles and Bible studies and you are just an atheist or you don't go to church with them on a Sunday they might see it as being, well, there's a disconnect because my wife is sat at home, um, you know, while I'm at church. And when we have Bible study, she's in another room. It could cause, it's like a lifestyle thing, but it depends on how willing the person is to adapt to another person or to accept. It's not even adapting because you're not going to become a vegan just because someone else is. But yeah, I like them as a couple because I think they're both matched equally in terms of personality. You don't have one person who's... Um, they're on the same level that's how it feels so yeah then let's go on to the next gay couple which is Thomas and Adrian which is completely different I think they're just planted on the show for entertainment purposes this is why um, a few of the people as well and in love at, and married at first sight have been spotted on different reality tv shows so there's lots of articles out there where they've said this person has been on lots of shows I think Thomas might be one of them he I get what he's trying to say. He's trying to say that he, this is his personality. This is who he is. Deal with it. He's very loud. He's over the top. Yesterday at the ceremony, um, it's he's like he has studied what an overly camp and gay man should do on these sorts of shows. And then he's, he's ramped it up a bit because, do you know, what? I don't even think that he's that over the top. I think that that's what he thinks he's supposed to present as like, or maybe the producers have said to him just exit 10x your personality. If he really is like that, and he said himself that he's hard work, then I don't know how he expects someone to just deal with that because they're just going to get to a point where they're like, you know, I've had enough. You're always going on. You're always fr uh, walking off, having tantrums. You're always shouting at me. You're always... Yesterday, you just out of nowhere, because one of the other contestants walked off and she was upset, he just started screaming at his partner for no reason. And then he walked off to another sofa and was talking about his partner. Um, talk, this was, um, what's he called? Thomas was talking about Adrian when he could hit, see that he was listening. And then it just turned into a massive big thing out of nothing. And I think that's what he wanted. And like his partner was saying, he wanted the attention to be on him. I think it's just a bit too much, but it is. Obviously, that maybe that's what people want to see. To me, it's just one of the areas where I need to keep recording the show so I can fast forward because it has no relevance and no like it doesn't bring anything to the show so for me then I don't think they're going to last or they're going to last for the show's purposes but then they're going to leave and then either if they do stay together it's not going to be for long the thing with this, these sorts of shows is it depends on what people's long-term goals are some people are going to stay together as a couple there's a few of the Australian ones that have done it just because they know that staying together as a couple and causing drama means they'll be in all the magazines for like months, they'll get contracts and things. But you have to think to yourself, is it really worth it? Because in the long term, how much can you sustain that for if it's just based on acting? Who wants to be part of a couple where you know you don't like each other really, but you go out together and you present that because you can get contracts, but you're living really unhappily? You know, it's probably better off that you just go out there on your own and see if you can forge a career from being on the show. Um, so another um, couple, so I think there's a few more, April and George. So April was one of the reasons why I had to, I couldn't watch the show. So I either have to put her on mute or I have to forward it because she's, and she's another person who's been on other reality TV shows. Beautiful, she's a beautiful woman. 
She's obviously won, I think, either won or, or was in, competing for Miss England. I think I said she's won. I didn't get all the information about all of the um, contestants. No one can say that she's not beautiful because she is. But she's, it's, she's just, to me, she's not authentic. And that might be because she's been on other shows before like that. So he, um, she, April, kissed another woman in a hot tub on their honeymoon. So yeah, so she kissed another woman in the hot tub on their honeymoon, her April and George's honeymoon. She said it was for a dare. Regardless, he found out and he was upset about it. She, he then was, obviously he shouldn't have done what he'd done either, which is at the dinner party, go around to lots of different people, telling them what she had um, done. That she then found out, but the, her reaction when she found out was completely ridiculous. I literally had to mute that whole scene because it was just one of those scenes where you know that it's either scripted, the producers have said to do it, or she's just, no tears, but she's there crying. How could he do this to me? Oh, I can't believe it. It was just over the top and it went on forever as well. So it was just like, okay, this is my scene now. This is my time. I need to just melt this. It's unnecessary because... Maybe what people need to understand is just be mature in that situation and have a conversation and just act like a normal couple would act in that situation. You know, you don't need to put on all the extra things, which because then it looks unrealistic. Lots of people who said they were fans of April, apparently on the vlogs, are saying now that she, they, don't, they find her irritating just based on that, um, what happened at that dinner party. Overall, with them as a couple, George has got, he's got four kids. He's older than her, you can see. I mean, I don't know how old he is, but he looks older. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know if they're matched. I don't know. The couple, Obviously, the experts know why they've matched people. I don't know why they're matched because I don't see any compatibility there. She's not got children. He's got four. He's older by looking. His personality is very calm, very... Uh, not going to say boring, but just that they're, they're just, I don't think they're matched personality wise. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on with them. I just think I don't, I don't know what to say about them as a couple. And the final couple I want to talk about is Whitney and Duca. So they're the couple that everyone is, um, there's more controversy surrounding them. So Whitney, she's, um, this is another person that's in an interracial couple. He's from Yugoslavia. So as I said, what I think happens is the producers will say, are you open to dating outside of your race or are you not? Because they're, they're not going to place people together if someone hasn't said they're open to it. That doesn't mean they, they, the person knows whether they're going to be matched with someone um, of the same ethnic background or not. But if you say no, then they're not going to do that. So he's from Yugoslavia. She's um, a black woman brought, living in the UK. Before she... Um, she went on the show she was talking no sorry on the show but before she got married sorry that she's had a loss of her mother so there was a that she was there with her aunt or her grandmother and there was a picture of her mum so she talks about the death of her mum she talked about you know what she's expecting and her expectations were quite high she's very high maintenance you can tell that she's grown up around affluent people you can tell that she has expensive tastes they already knew that, so I think she's another person that was picked specifically selected to be someone that the audience could hate, someone that is controversial, someone that is outspoken. We all know that that's what they do on these sorts of shows. They choose select people. They go on Instagram, they go on different places, and they find certain um, controversial um, contestants because that's what they think makes the show. I actually like Whitney. <laughs> Um, I like her because I think I can see what's beneath what's going on for her. She's in a lot of pain and I think yesterday definitely showed that. I was really emotional when she was talking and when I forgot Lara, uh, Richie was talking. I don't think I've met, I've talked about them. No, I forgot about them. Um, Richie, when he was talking, I got emotional as well. She probably shouldn't be on the show because I just think she doesn't seem like she's worked through the things that she needs to work through. And I think whatever's happened, not just with the bereavement issue of her mum, also with how she's been treated in the past, which she sort of alluded to, but she didn't go into. It's not helping her because like the, the, the um, rest of the cast, or not cast, the rest of the couples, they're being a bit um, standoffish with her or they're not understanding because they're just seeing a woman 
and Whitney just shouting at Duca all the time or shutting down or crying and they don't know what's going on yesterday in the commitment ceremony she said that he talks about you know getting when he's going to get lots of women when he leaves the show and blah 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 he didn't deny it so I think he probably is that type of person that he's saying I don't care if we don't get on I'm going to look the best person out of this I'm going to get contracts and deals he probably is saying that but then I also feel a bit sorry for him because it sounds like he's, he, it felt, felt like he was trying but he kept getting shut down but then I feel sorry for her Whitney because I think she is struggling to put the walls down and it's like a cycle because he's the more he tries and then when he's different off camera she's seeing that she's then thinking I can't trust you because look how you're acting off camera she then doesn't want to trust him anyway because she's been hurt by men in the past and it's just that but I think right if they get it together and she's got 24 hours to decide I think they could be a really good couple because deep down I think he's a nice person he seems like it and she seems like someone who needs that it's like yin and yang she needs someone who's going to be gentle and give her time and not say oh you're being a diva um but and I think he's I think they're a good match I, I can see why the experts put them together but I just think they're not working right now because there's things going on but if they get past it with the help of the experts um, I would actually like to see them like pro progress so I hope she doesn't decide to leave but she might leave because that would be like easier and the, and I think one of the experts when he said you're sabotaging yourself I that's what I said from the first time I'd seen her because I thought she was I she was saying things controversial things not just to Duca Whitney was but she was saying them to other contestants because I think she wanted to keep people at arm's length and she wanted to ruin things and I've seen people behave like that before where they're so you, you know they want people's jaws to drop they're like did you really just say that you know she was all like oh I don't know if I want to put the ring on and oh I'm not going to say this speech and it there was but it wasn't like Thomas where he's just doing that for attention it was more of she's making it clear this is my boundary but she's not realizing that it's keeping people at arm's length but that's not really what she wants when she started when Whitney started crying that was her expressing that this is just too much she said it's too overwhelming she's using those words that's how she feels and I think if Duca can just be himself off camera as well and he just shows her the same level of affection that he shows when they're together in front of everyone if the experts can help them as well and if she can bring the walls down a little bit and just allow him to you know show her who he is and they do fun activities together I think they could be a really good couple because I think they're a good match so that's my sort of assessment of everything that's going on I think these sorts of shows they are interesting to watch they can be um oh another one that I, another uh, reality tv I used to watch 90 day fiance but then that's the same thing the first series was like yeah fascinating interesting but then people are playing up to the camera people have watched it before and they're doing silly things and it's just if, if you know something scripted and acted and you know that it's just oh that wouldn't really happen that's unrealistic that's over the top it then becomes more of like a drama and I don't watch soap operas I don't watch EastEnders or none of those dramas so why would I watch a reality TV show that's supposed to show like real reactions but then it's acting so it just doesn't it doesn't fit with either category so let me know what you guys think let me know if you've been watching let me know what you think of the couples, who's your favourite, who are some of the people that you are not liking at the moment. I'm going to continue to watch the show. I think I'll still record it when I can so that I can fast forward <laughs> some of the bits that I'm not really interested in finding. But I'll definitely watch the commitment ceremonies because I'll get a lot from them. So thanks for watching everyone. And if you're watching this on the replay, leave your comments, let me know what you think. See you all soon. Bye.